Consideration paid for by the following. The Ohio Neck and Back Pain Relief Center, Scott M. Gray, D.C., across from the Marion Center between TSC and Kroger. For further information, dial 740-386-6580. Also located on the net at goodbackbadback.com. Marion Blue Racers football. Feel the heat. Feel the excitement. The best fan experience going in Marion today. Perkins Family Restaurant and Bakery, located at 1197 Mount Vernon Avenue, right here in Marion. Open Monday through Saturday, 6 a.m. to 9 p.m., and Sunday, 7 a.m. to 9 p.m. Hey, stop into Perkins and take a look at the newly remodeled dining room. Perfect for that family get-together or that intimate get-together with friends. And hey, while you're there, check out the delicious items in the bakery. Perfect for all those Thanksgiving needs, as well as any pie, cookie, or muffin add-on to any meal. Also, check out the Get Crackin' and Biscuit Bake menus. Perkins Family Restaurant and Bakery, a family tradition in Marion for well over 30 years. From our family to yours, hey, stop on by. Spoon frozen yogurt and more where you can customize your own indulgent dessert. Choose from 14 flavors including cookies and cream, our seasonal pumpkin cheesecake, classic white vanilla, or our creamy and rich chocolate. Check out our newest offering, fresh baked toppings. Every day we are in the back making mini cookies, mini buckeyes, and crispy waffle cones. Come in from 11 a.m. to 1 p.m. and enjoy our yogurt at a discounted price of just 39 cents an ounce. Check out our Facebook page for our daily discounts for everyone, from seniors to moms. Try our fresh-made crepes and waffles, or make your own delicious and customized yogurt smoothie. Groovy Spoon Frozen Yogurt and more, right here in Marion on Mount Vernon Avenue. Scott Spears along with you on the Wednesday edition of The Exchange, and it's become one of my favorite days because it is the second edition, second week that we've done the Blue Racer 30, which is going to be a lot of fun. Team owner Lamont Coleman along with us, and uh, he's got a special guest this week. I think a lot of Marion people are going to be familiar with, and you'll find out about that just in one second. I do want to let everybody know, coming up for the remainder of the week on The Exchange, we'll be here at Groovy Spoon, Groovy Spoon on Mount Vernon Avenue. What a great place to be. Best frozen yogurt in the business, without doubt. Smells great in here. Just stop by, look at their samples. I guarantee you'll have some in your belly by the time you leave. There's no doubt about it. On Thursday this week on The Exchange, we're going to have an interview with Reverend William Hout. That's all I'm going to say right now. That'll be tomorrow. You'll want to pay attention. Very important interview. And then on Friday, we'll look back at the career of Virginia Graham with a five-minute um, a peek into her life, clips into her uh, programs of over 50 years ago, kind of laid the groundwork for all talk shows of today, and we'll also uh, talk about reality television. Maybe we'll talk about Kim Kardashian, <laughs> Charlie, and all that she's been up to lately. So better watch out. She might be married and divorced again by the time we get to Friday this That's week. That's all right. You can dial her up on YouTube. <laughs> <laughs> dial her up oh, on YouTube. Oh, boy. Oh, Charlie, have you dialed her up you on YouTube? You might see more than you want to. Have you dialed Kim Kardashian up on YouTube? Yes. Holy mackerel, Charlie. 
I never thought I'd hear a oh, confession geez, like that. She's a joke, that. you know. <laughs> that whole family. Well, it's obscene for yeah. somebody to yeah. spend that much money on a wedding. Well, when there obscene. Are people out there with no that, jobs. Yeah. She's yeah. obscene on YouTube. Mm. Well, I'm not talking about that. <laughs> I'm just talking about the fact that oh, all yeah. that money. That whole, that whole thing is a tragedy of something. Uh, but, but we, the American People public, it, go for things People like that. People love that show. Oh, I know they love it, yeah. Oh, boy, look at that wedding but gown. But paid them. That's the marketplace. Hey, that's the way it is. Charlie, give us some fascinating things. <laughs> boy, this isn't very fascinating. Back in World War II, when we couldn't get tires, we had the recaps. I don't know if I ever mentioned this before, but uh, like if you had a set of tires and you couldn't afford a new, or couldn't even get them, let alone afford them, you could go to a vulcanizing shop and they would put a uh, stretch a, a, a tread around your current tire and vulcanize it, you know, heat it up and it'd stick to your uh, casing for quite a while. But if you notice along the roads today, we saw all kinds of vulcanizing truck treads lying along the road and you would never want to get hit by one of those. I bet you wouldn't. Mm, and I, boy. I do want to make mention here before we get to the blue racers today, Don't this is it. a... No, this is a crepe that Charlie's uh, polished about half of away already on the program today. I couldn't keep it away from him. The rest of it's coming like, up. He's got a fork over here. He's dangerous. But this is a crepe. Look at this. How does that taste, Charlie? Excellent. Delicious and warm. I'll let you know more in a yeah, minute go, here. Charlie will be going for the rest of the day. Marianne, any words of wisdom today? Yes, I do. Uh, light your life with learning. And this is from Benjamin Franklin. Of course, everybody knows about Benjamin Franklin. He's an American statesman and a scientist. If a man empties his purse in his head, no one can take it from him. Do you understand that, Scott? Why would a man have a purse? I was wondering the same you thing. You understand that, LC? I don't understand that. Because but why would, a, why would a grown man go out and fly a kite? <laughs> well, first of all, in those days, you don't know much about history. Oh, in those excuse days, me, Mary. In those days, they carry purses. Men did not care. Benjamin Franklin carried a purse? He carried a pouch. They called him a, a satchel. pouch. Yes, satchel. Yeah. That's satchel. Right. Thank you. If you would have said satchel, Marianne, I would have understood. <laughs> but this was his, these are his words. I do not take somebody else's That's words. That's right. I don't think he said purse, though, did he? He said purse. I'm going to check her facts. I don't think Benjamin Franklin said purse, but that's okay. Okay. Reminds me of that famous baseball player. Who? Satchel Paige. There you go. <laughs> Tie it all in together there. It is Wednesday here, and we're going to move on to talking about purses. I don't think he said that. Google that at home right now. To the Marion Blue Racers. You're talking about fun. You're talking about excitement. You're talking about things going on in Marion. You're talking about the Marion Blue Racers joined for week two by my good pal, L.C., the owner of the Marion Blue Racers. L.C., so great to have you back with us. Uh, thank you, Scott. It's great to be here. I enjoyed last week's show, and uh, I have a great guest tonight uh, with uh, one of Marion's own, T Mac, T -Mac McKenzie. Uh, now, you were giving me some great facts about T Mac before we went on the air here. Uh, give some of those facts because they are astounding, and I think people in Marion probably don't know about them. Well, first and foremost, uh, Thomas McKenzie is uh, not only is he one of my players, but he's a good friend. Uh, Thomas is, um, is definitely a fan favorite. Uh, he's, a, he's a family man, he enjoys his kids, but when you get to the gridiron, Marion has not enjoyed a ball player that's better on the, on the football field. When you talk about a guy who is the UIFL's reigning sack leader um, and defensive player of the year, uh, Thomas McKenzie has averaged about 14 and a half sacks over the last five years. I don't know anyone in the NFL all the way down who has averaged stats like that. So I'm really, I'm really pleased that the Maryland Blue Racers has one of the most dominating defensive linemen in the indoor game. Now, how did you and uh, T Mac hook up? That's a great question. In 2010, um, I was hired as the general manager for the Maryland Mayhem, and um, T Mac was already. Uh, had, he was a household name and whatnot, and over the over the, uh, the first four games, I realized that we have a little bit of a dynamo uh, of a defensive lineman. So um, he did a very good job uh, for the for the mayor and mayhem, and then since then his uh, what, since then he he was hired on with the North Kentucky, North Kentucky River Monsters, which were division champs, and um, sought out I uh, sought out sought him out and then said, hey, you know the Blue Racers definitely look, looking for a dominant D lineman and. He wanted to come back home, and we're glad to have him. Mm. T-Mac, you went away for a little bit. When you got the call from uh, LC to come back, what was that like? 
Um, when I got the call, um, first I checked the phone, made sure it was really him. <laughs> um, but real, realizing that to have the opportunity to play with the owner that cares about the fans and, and really cares and supports the players is something that on, on this level is um, you need it. You need someone that's going to be in your corner and back you, support you on and off the field. I mean, we play football, but we have families. We have other jobs and things like that, and he backs us with that. In the short time I've been with him, he's been in my corner 100%, and I was friends with a lot of players that played here last year, and they told me how great of an owner and a friend he was, and we were friends before then, so it was a no-brainer when he called. I want to talk to you. I have two questions come to mind. You played for the Marion Mayhem, and last week we made a great distinction between the Blue Racers and what the Mayhem were. Uh, having played for the Mayhem and now being a part of the Blue Racers, what are the big differences that you see? Well, the, the biggest difference, um, like I said before, is the, the impact that the ownership and from top all the way down has on the players. Um, the fans have always been great. Mayhem fans, Blue Racer fans, they, playing in Marion, the support that you get from the fans has always been astounding. Um, but when you have an owner now that understands the game of football, who played football on the highest level um, and who understands the family aspect of it, um, it works great. And I think that's the biggest difference between the Blue Racers and the Mayhem. The other question I wanted to ask, last week our guest on Blue Racer 30 was uh, head coach Lorenzo Stiles. Uh, what do you think that relationship's going to be like and, and what um, impression do you have of him so far? Well, actually, my, my, the year with um, LC, when he was the general manager of the Mayhem, um, coach Styles was actually my defensive line coach, so I've um, I've worked with him before. The best part about him is for all the accolades that he's achieved in his life with Ohio State and Super Bowl champion with the Rams and things of that nature. You would never know it. He's down to earth, um, talks to everybody with respect, treats everybody with respect, and his knowledge of football is bad. So um, when you have somebody with those capabilities all rolled into one, it's, it's successful. You know, uh, I asked uh, Coach Styles this last week. None of us have a crystal ball, of course. Season hasn't started yet. We'll start uh, early next year. Um, wh where do you feel the Blue Races are going this year? What, what's the outlook like? Well, last year they were in the CIFL, and they were a couple of big plays away from being the CIFL champion. Um, I feel like with the additions that they've added to the foundation they already had from last year, the anything less than us winning a championship in finally bringing a championship home to Marion is um, not what we're shooting for. It's championship or bust. Absolutely. Hey, that's the way to go. Charlie, you're eating your crepe here. Tell us uh, what yeah. you think. What questions do you have for the Blue Racers? Yeah, I, I wonder what's the, the atmosphere going to be like during the game. It's going to be a, uh, music and uh, all kinds of giveaways and different things to attract, uh, you know, make it worth your while other than watching football. Uh, absolutely, and, and, and the in, indoor game slash arena game, uh, giveaways and basically creating a circus atmosphere, you know, yeah. for, during timeouts. Um, you know, we have, um, we have Ty Boltman, who is the president of the Coliseum Crazies, and basically, you know, mm -hmm. you want to talk about Dooley dressing up. <laughs> they, <laughs> they have themes where they'll come out and have big wigs on, they like to interact with the fans, interact with the with the kids, and so with the companies and the sponsors that we have already, we're looking to not only um, create a, create a buzz with uh, with winning, but we're also going to be able to give away products like technology, iPods, plasma screen TV. So we're working with wow. sponsors to incorporate their gifts and whatnot to help the fans of Marion um, appreciate the whole totality of the indoor okay. game. What about food? Food? Uh, the Coliseum, uh, they, they provide uh, some of the best concessions uh, uh, in Marion, Ohio. Uh, I think that uh, it's very affordable uh, from Gatorades to um, Gatorades to hot foods and whatnot. So Great. you don't have to spend uh, you don't have to spend a lot when you come to the Coliseum. It's very affordable for a family of four. A family affair. That's great. And do you have uh, are people able to buy season tickets? Oh, absolutely. So, uh, it w how do they get them? Well, uh, the Marion Blue Racers. Our web our website is www.blueracersfootball.com. Uh, my vice president Ryan Soar, as we speak, is working on a online shop. 
So fans can call the office at 614-987-0199. And I guess I'm going to break the news on this show. I didn't tell Scott or Marilyn or Charlie, but uh, I think that the Marin Blue Racers is going to have a uh, team shop and team office starting de- December 1 right here in Marion, Ohio. Wow. So fans, you can come out, you can come up and, and talk to T-Mac, get autographs. Kids can come up and look, uh, look in the store and, and find different products and whatnot. And when you talk about product, I do have to plug our sponsor, River's Edge, where they make all the best apparel in Marion, Ohio. So you see the number out front. If you want great product, please call Rivers Edge and Embroidery, and they'll take care of all your apparel needs. Now, that's good quality cotton, I can that, tell. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, yeah, for sure. Very that, that's good a very quality. nice shirt. Absolutely. What about your web page? Do you have one now? Yes, uh, we have. We, we're, well, we're working on an online shop, so uh, with it being November, you know, we're really early in the game, but even tonight, they... They took care of hats for for the show. They knew they were going on uh, the best show in town, which is the Marin Exchange. Oh. And basically, we want people to know that you have some of the best football and best product for the best people in Marion. Sounds great. Now, well, this sounds like something coming to Marion, not only entertainment-wise, which it sounds great entertainment-wise, but that that could help jumpstart an economy. Oh, yeah. Could be yeah. very. Um, Marion needs something to feel good about. Yeah, we need to get behind something. Right. Right. This sounds great. What do you think it is in your, because this is a personal thing, in your bones, in your DNA, that makes you want to be so community oriented? Well, I mean, I guess it goes back to our, our slogan, which is community, family, and football. And we have adopted that slogan in that order because without the first two, we can't have football. You know, Marion is a small town. And the one thing we want to do is focus on the youth mentoring. Um, these young kids, not only do they need something to do, but whether it's football or not, younger people aspire. One day they're going to be adults. And, you know, you know, things are so commercialized now to where when they see a football player or a baseball player, they aspire to be like that ball player. So uh, in their contract, you know, yeah, the players have to be out in the community and touch lives and, and be part of the school districts and whatnot. But our players are not coerced to do it. They want to do it because it's just in their DNA. So and Definitely. And with me, I'm part of this community. I live in Marion. Um, my, me and my girlfriend live in Marion. Our Brady bunch of kids live in Marion. <laughs> and it's, um, it, it's our community. And we live here. And, and we see the potential in, in the schools, in, in the middle schools, and in the high schools that are in Marion. And we just... As a family, because I feel like the Marion Blue Race organization is a family, we as a family want to uplift this community and get it to a place to where people can be proud and the youth and the kids can be proud to say, I'm from Marion, Ohio. You know, and I came from Marion, Ohio, and I was successful from Marion, Ohio. What would you tell those people right now who are watching this show, and I know there's a vast majority of them, who say, you know, when I graduate college, I want to leave Marion. I want to get out. I have this attitude that I want to go other places. What you say to those people? Well, me as a person, me individually, I grew up in a, in a neighborhood um, that was um, very low income, very poor. Um, once I graduated from college, I went back to that neighborhood to, to try to leave an imprint on it. Um, I went back to that neighborhood to make sure that I could do something for the kids there, whether it was volunteering your time, um, volunteering your, your efforts, money, whatever it is, to help that community. So to answer your question, when, when people say they want to graduate and leave Marion, Ohio, you can always leave, but you're still from there. That's still your mm-hmm. home. You're always going to be attached to your home. So you, could, you have an option. You could either leave your home or you can come back to your home and try to better it for the, for the next generation. And that's what we're trying to do. Hmm. That's very well put. That's very good. well yeah. said. Um, Elsie, there, there seems to be, we, we've met two uh, to three members of, I know two came with you last week, they weren't on, on camera, two of your players. Uh, they all seem to have this common thread running through, Marion-oriented, um, uplifting personalities, good personalities. Uh, is that something you look for when you go out and, and if some, let me put it this way, if somebody came to you and they were a great player, but they, you know, uh... You know, okay, it's Marion. I'm coming to Marion, and da 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 da. Would you accept them on your team? Well, I mean, great question. 
Um, you know, I guess to, to put it simply, we're a business and there are, we are a competitive business. So if you want to be part of the Marin Blue Racers, whether it's in the front office as one of our coaches or a player, you know, we run, we run criminal background checks because doctor, I just had lunch with Dr. Barney uh, last week. And if we're going to have our, our ball players who some of them have bachelor degrees, master's degrees, um, in education and, and other, and other venues or other capacities, we don't want to put a player they may have a, a sketchy background in the same classroom of a child. So that's why it goes back, everything goes back to my, our slogan, community family football. What we are looking for is quality people. So we're looking for quality people that, you know, actually play good football, you know, so the character has to come first. What about your competitors? Who will they be? Uh, some of our competitors, uh, T-Mac knows the, uh, knows the league better than I do, so T-Mac, you want to talk about some, um, some of our opponents? Team. As far as Ohio, you have uh, Canton, you have the Canton Cougars, um, you have uh, Cincinnati Commandos, which were in the league with um, Marion Blue Racers last year. They were in the CIFL. They also followed uh, Marion to the UIFL. You have the Northern, you have the Northern Kentucky Monsters. Um, you have teams in Johnstown, Pennsylvania, you have uh, teams in Florida, Georgia, um, Wisconsin, um, Car all over. Carolina. 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 So it, it spans all over as far as from uh, Ohio over east and in the south of us. So it's a, it's a huge league. I never realized it was that extensive. Yeah. So That's, there's traveling yes. involved. and, yes. and all. What's the travel like? I'm always amazed by that because you get on a, a team like this, and obviously it's not NFL. It's not uh, college. Uh, what's the travel like from place to place? Well, um, <clears throat> indoor leagues like this, we want to try to keep the cost down. So having regional rivalries are, are really big. Uh, basically going out to North Kentucky, which is basically across the bridge from Cincinnati to Cincinnati Commandos or Canton. Um, when, you, when you think about these indoor leagues, think about triple A or double A, you know, where um, you know, a bus a bus ride for three or four hours is not out of the question. Um, if it's a if it's an elongated trip like five or six hours, then ownership myself will look at basically trying to accommodate the players with a sleeper bus. Now it's not a hotel, but it's the next best thing where our players can get a quality rest and they can uh, they can enjoy the trip uh, before they go to competition. If I gave you a pie right now and I said uh, football community. Where's that pie cut? Uh, what, during the off season, it's probably community 80, football 20, because you basically uh, pay the bills before the season. So our players, which I have a coach coming from Tucson, Arizona, coming in for community events. You have to focus on the community, and I know that that's an overblown term. What does that mean to the Blue Racers? Being in the community means that we're at the festivals, Marin festivals, popcorn festivals, we're at the fair, we're doing things to help some of the youth in Marion with their homework or basically just st uh, giving them an opportunity to sign autographs and let them know we care. Uh, or also, you know, I guess politically is to sit down with the mayor or the commissioner and understand his mission and vision for the city. If we adopt the business plan for the, for the city, then that makes us a partner throughout Marion, Ohio. It's, it's, it's such a great thing uh, coming. And the first game again is when, Elsie? Um, March 3rd, we're on the road to open the season uh, against our arch rival Cincinnati Commandos. And we open up here March 10th in, in uh, Veterans Memorial Coliseum against the North Kentucky Monsters. It's going to be a lot of fun. And Elsie will be back next week. He'll have another guest with him. Uh, T-Mac, thank you so much for being no here this week. Gosh, I appreciate it's, it. It's been a lot of fun. And we'll be back again next week with another edition of the Blue Racer 30. Don't forget tomorrow that interview with Reverend William Houck. Uh, important to watch that.